Oh, so, morning everyone. Can you hear me? All of you? Fine. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say thanks for the organization to accept my proposal and uh, congratulations to the organization for the great event. It's my first time here uh, at PGCon, so I'm so happy to be here. And I anticipate to apologize because my English isn't so good. So if you don't understand something, feel free to break, interrupt, and ask again. And I will try to do my best. Well, I will start talking a little bit about myself, about where I was born. I was born in the south part of Brazil, in a city called Dom Pedrito. And uh, far, far away from here was a long, long trip to be here today, to be here to um, PGCon. But I lived uh, all of my life in Bagé, is a near city from Montevideo, at the south part of, Bra of Brazil. It's a, it's 12, uh, 200 36 miles away from Porto Alegre. Porto Alegre is a capital of our state. It's a city where we have the FISL, the International Free Software Forum. This is a forum, the most important forum of about free software around the world. Well, in my hometown, uh, it was common to, to people just uh, be born there, grow up there, build a family there, spend an entire life there, and uh, of course die there. And uh, until 2000, uh, 2005, this lifestyle fitted with my old needs because I'm happy with my, my life, with my work. I already work with IT. But I had an opportunity to work 100% of my time, all of my time with free and open source software, to work with this company at Porto Alegre called DB Seller. And uh, we develop a software using PHP and, of course, PostgreSQL. Of course, I uh, worked as an employee at this company because my knowledge about PostgreSQL. Just a little about background information about me. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur at Timbira.com. It's a small company in Brazil that provides uh, services, professional PostgreSQL services. My two partners are here, Euler and Te Fabio Telles. And the free software in me. Well, my first contact was using Linux in 1997. And uh, I fell in love with this culture because how about free software is amazing. You have the opportunity to see how the things work inside, look into the code, change something, hacking, and uh, share experience, share code. Well, in 1999, I met PostgreSQL during my major. And I knew that uh, this would be part of my life. But unfortunately, free and open source software beat me a while because I had a lot of financial troubles because this, because this decision to work only with free and open source software. I declined a lot of uh, other opportunities to work with Oracle, Windows, SQL Server, Sybase, and another but I decided that I would uh, work just with Linux and uh, related software. Well, I don't give up and I'm here now. Here I am. I just copy and paste an information about uh, Google Summer of Code. What is Google Summer of Code? Is a, this is a global program that offers students stipends to write code uh, for, for open source projects. Well, to me, 
Google Summer of Code is a way to connect students to open source communities. Simple that. Just connect students to open source communities. Because Google found the students to involve in a small open source project to deliver something to community. But uh, the main purpose is connect students to open source community, to renew communities, to engage more people to open source communities. GSOC and PostgreSQL, uh, we participated since 2006, and we had already had, uh, we already have a cool project, fast gist, new PHP, admin plugin architecture, was a Brazilian that made this architecture to PHP, PG admin, PG admin database designer, better indexes for ranges, document collection for data wrapper, and uh, of course, there are my projects too. Well, what is my project? What is about my project? My in PostgreSQL 9.1, introduce a new kind of tables called unlogged tables. It's a really cool feature. But what means unlogged? To understand what means unlogged, first we need to understand what means wall. PostgreSQL is a full SD, and to guarantee uh, data integrity, this, we use this standard method called wall, white ahead. Logging is a, is a standard technique. Again, I copy and paste the Wikipedia definition of what is wall. This is in computer science, right ahead logging is a family of techniques for providing atomicity and durability through of the acid properties in database systems. Okay, of course, all uh, data modifications in our PostgreSQL first is write to write ahead log. Okay, but and what means unlogged table? That means the data written in these tables is not written to wall. Simple. So it makes written in this table really, really fast. We have a table with a really, really fast uh, update, insert, and delete operations. Okay, if it's really fast, no, I will use it to all of my tables. Wherever you want, do that because they are neither crash safe and they are uh, not replicated using streaming replication because the data is not written to write ahead log. And the streaming replication uses the write ahead log to stream data to slaves, to another servers. There. Please. When you said a table is truncated after a crash run. Yes. Because it's just empty? Yes, just empty. Yeah. Yes. If a crash occurs during the crash recovery, the PostgreSQL detects, oh, here are an uh, unlogged table because the init fork, and then uh, the contents is all uh, truncated. The relation is truncated during the crash recovery process. But there are some cool, cool use cases to unlock tables. Speed ETL jobs is a case. Cache, some kind of cache. Session state, there are a lot of uh, web applications that maintain uh, user state, session information into the database. Queues maybe, and other that I don't point in here. And now, uh, I implemented, uh, I changed gram, uh, PostgreSQL grammar to add in two new uh, st uh, statements to, to alter table, set logged and set unlogged. This is a way to change one table from unlogged to logged and vice versa, from logged to unlogged. Of course, it's already committed last year by Alvaro Herrera. <coughs> uh, Actually, it was committed on time to finish the, the Google Summer of Code time box. It was really cool. And the current implementation is, 
is that first we need to acquire an access exclusive lock. We need to check some dependencies. Uh, we cannot change temp tables because temp tables are a special kind of table. We should check some foreign keys because we don't uh, we don't um, we can have uh, a foreign key uh, to a unlock from a regular table to an unlogged table, and then we create a new heap with a new rel persistence, and then rewrite the entire content of heap, toast, and index. So we need a lot of space if you have a large table because the content uh, during the process was completely duplicated in the file system. And of course, the current caveat is access exclusive lock. That means nobody can access the relation during the process and rewrite all data files. So if, you ha if we have a large, large table to change from logged to logged, we need to wait a long time to all data be uh, rewriting, uh, be rewritten into a new rel persistence, in a new heap in new indexes. And now, I'm enrolled again to GSOC 2015 to a second round of this project. Uh, we decided uh, implemented uh, uh, in this way because a lot of problems with, with crash recovery. So we had a long discussion and hackers uh, mailing lists about what we want to do. And uh, last year we decided to implement it in that way, rewrite the entire table. Now, a second round of this project will be improve the performance of the outer table set logged and logged. That means when wall level is uh, equal minimal, we don't need to rewrite the entire heap, toast, and whatever. To rewrite all data files associated to the relation. And if we, we have wall level different from minimal, hot standby archive logical, we create wall records to stream data to, to another servers. So this is the main proposal, proposal of this year. And the main problems about this task, to change an unlogged table to logged, we need drop or create an init fork. The init fork is a special data file that marks the relation is an unlocked relation, and uh, it is not a transactional operation because, a file, because this is a file system operation. So we have uh, a challenge here. What is the problem? If we, need, if we drop the init fork and the crash occurs, we are in an inconsistent state. Because catalog will point the relation is unlogged and we drop the init fork, but a crash occurs. The transaction was not committed. And we don't have any more the init fork. <coughs> this is a problem. And we are in an inconsistent state. And in a, another way, if you create the init fork and a crash occurs, the catalog will point to the relation is logged and we create the init fork. So during the crash recovery, the crash recovery process will see, oh, we have an init fork for this relation. So we will truncate the relation. And the, during the crash recovery, we don't have access to catalog. So PostgreSQL will see, well, we have an init fork, truncate the relation. But the relation was marked with uh, a persistence, persistent, has a persistent in, in PG class. So mm, again, we are in an inconsistent state. 
Well, but uh, me and my mentor, Ashutosh Baspat from Enterprise DB, we think a while about uh, an idea that I started to implement, to start to coding. The first part is equal, uh, and uh, is already implemented into, co into core, but uh, we think about creating a transient init fork to crash recovery detection. That means if I change one table from unlogged to logged, I will have the init fork and the transient init fork. So if a crash occurs, during the crash recovery, I can detect, oh, this table is a, in an inconsistent state. So I will do the correct job, drop the transient state or create the init fork. And then we flush relations and sync relation, of course. Drop or create the init fork dependent, the, that the, dependent of the way that I run in set logged or set unlogged. Of course, change catalog of uh, my relation, toast, indexes. And at the end, drop the transient init fork. And all these operations was record to wall because during a crash recovery, wall can finish the, the job to us. This is our idea. And if we have a wall level different of minimal, we just do the same job of uh, I have explained in the, the last slide, plus we will choose log, X log all pages of data files too during the process. So in that way, we don't need to rewrite the entire table, duplicate the entire content on disk and write walls and streaming data to another server. So this is the, the main challenge to do this in this year about uh, change unlogged to logged tables. Well, it was a really fast <laughs> presentation. <laughs> there are, I'm open for questions, ideas. Please. So, I can understand from an uh, algebra and integrity point of view why the table gets populated if it's unlogged and you have a crash. But I can also think of use cases where you might want to have data that you're writing quickly and it's acceptable to lose a little bit of it. Um, and, and maybe it's certain properties like the table is uh, you know, write only, never update, or, or something like that. Are there thoughts to create another type that would allow you to have it be unlogged and, and not get truncated on a crash? Well, can you repeat the last part of your cast question? Sure. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm thinking is it would be useful to have another table type, perhaps, like another attribute, uh, where it has the unlocked property, but it also has a property that on a crash, truncation doesn't happen. It, it gets truncated. Yes. The OK. But uh, the main problem is during the crash recovery, you don't have access to catalog. So we, I can change the catalog to another uh, rel persistence or another type of table. But uh, this change will be committed, uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be affected if uh, the transaction was committed, you know? But if a crash occurs before commit, uh, during a crash recovery, I don't have access to catalog. The crash recovery process is, is a file system process. Uh, you know, read the right ahead log and finish the, uh, they, they finish the unfinished job yeah. in a file system level. Yeah. And we don't have access to catalog. Because that uh, is more difficult to, to do this, this job.
Is that? Yes, if a crash happens, we don't know what is the state of the relation because we don't have uh, write ahead log. An unlogged table don't have unlogged. So uh, this is a this is a current implementation of unlogged tables in, in PostgreSQL. Right. So what, so what I'm saying is a new type instead of completely unlocked, where you do something like you have a simple checkpoint for for data that you're writing and never updating. You say uh, I want to write uh, this. I want to write it in an unlogged way because I don't care if I lose some of it. I don't need the data integrity. But what I'm going to do is perhaps write a, a checkpoint periodically that says. Until here, until the spots are good, okay. And then at recovery time, you, you truncate yes. past that. This is a completely new proposal. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fine. But, but I think there are some use cases for something like that, and I don't think there's any other way to do it right now. Yes. I, yes. Not, not yet, not yet, because this, this idea, I working on this patch yet. I'm working on this idea. Actually, uh, I discuss a lot of my my mentor, and uh, during the event, I hacking, hacking, and hacking, writing code. So I hope we, we can uh, do this in a do this job in a good way that can be accepted by community to be committed to PostgreSQL. So we can finish uh, this second round of unlogged tables to a good, uh, a good implementation. More questions? No? My Brazilian partner? No? Sorry? Yeah. Mr. Tom Lane? No? OK. Well, I have some special thanks to Stephen Frost, who was my mentor last year, Josh Berks and Tom Rao, organizers, Christoph Berg uh, in the patch review, and now Verheira, patch review and commit, and this year's Josh and Tom is organizers again, and my this year mentor Ash Ashtosh Baspa from Enterprise DB. Okay, and uh, I appreciate if you can attend our event in Brazil. Uh, the call for paper is open, PGBR, that uh, will occur in November 18, 19, and 20 in Porto Alegre, and uh, in this website uh, have all the information about the event. Oh, oops. Sorry. I will share here. Here. So this year as our Brazilian conference that I am the main organizer. If you want to attend our event, we appreciate a lot. Okay, that's all folks. Thank you so much.